to single digits miles per hour so that we can land softly. It's a process that involves three distinct phases. They're called EDL, entry, descent, and landing. Each is potentially deadly. Descent landing, we are currently six minutes from landing at the Ghost of Crater in the Southern Hemisphere of Mars. This man has lived through the risky EDL phase of a mission to Mars before. Steve Squires has successfully seen two rovers land on the planet. You know, it takes six minutes between you hit, when you hit the top of the atmosphere to when you're on the surface. And it takes 10 minutes for the radio signal traveling at the speed of light to get from Mars to Earth. We were just spectators with better seats. I mean, we had a lot of things in our control room, but one of the things we didn't have was control. We had no control whatsoever. It's utterly beyond your control at that point. It's going to work or it's not going to work, but there's not a thing that you can do. The Mars Exploration rover landings went off without a hitch. But they were using tried and tested technology. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just blown away by this. Phoenix isn't. All the team at JPL can do is monitor the data that records the spacecraft's entry into Mars's atmosphere and hope for the best. Friction from the atmosphere slows the craft to about 750 miles per hour. First, you have a heat shield, which takes this enormous potential energy and converts it into heat. That's 99% of the deceleration. Then when it's done, out pops a parachute, and it takes another 99% of the speed out. The parachute's performance is crucial to the success of the mission. Up to this point, Phoenix's EDL is identical to any other Mars mission. But unlike the rovers before it, Phoenix has no airbags to cushion its landing. Instead, it uses 12 descent rockets clustered around the hull to slow down. In the final 34 seconds of descent, they fire rapid pulses carefully timed to bring the lander down at five and a half miles an hour. The last time this system of thrusters was used to land a probe was in 1999 with NASA's Mars Polar Lander. But the technology failed and the spacecraft was lost. If Phoenix's engines have failed, its terminal descent will have been just that. Five years of hard work will have been for nothing. It's a worst case scenario. If all has gone according to plan, Phoenix's thrusters will have fired in the last moments of its nine month long journey. Sensors located on the foot pads of the lander will have detected touchdown, switching off its hydrazine fed engines. Right now, Phoenix, as well as controllers back on Earth, are waiting for the dust to settle before communications are re-established. And then, of course, will come the moment when it's too late to even ask any questions. Standing by for possible flattened blackout. Did the radar see the ground properly? Did the computer interpret the information properly? Did the pulsing engines do what they were supposed to do? I can't wait. Will somebody please tell me now? This evening, NASA is waiting for a signal from Phoenix. Did it land safely? And can its search for life on the red planet now begin? <laughs>